It rides upon the praises of his people. It rides upon the praises of his people. Well, this is about how it works. This is about how it works. The wonderful thing tonight is the teacher, the, the, the prophet, the glory of the Father, a, a teacher far better than Moses, teacher far better than Samuel, teacher far better than Elijah, a teacher that Jesus even put in a place above himself. He's willing to go home with you tonight. and He's willing to instruct you in the night. He's willing to open up your understanding and cause you to be able to see things that will change every dimension of your life and all your decision points will be different. Oh, yeah. No, I'm talking about relationship. I'm not talking about your religion you come to know. I'm talking about a realm where this teacher, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Ghost has come to lead us and guide us. He's come to fill us and overwhelm us. He's come to show us all the Father's delights and all the heavenly things that are completely out of the sight of men. I'm telling you, the blind, mind-blinding spirits that have hid the glory of the gospel. I, I, I know that by and large, uh, the church has placed that within the, the framework of the lost who've not yet called upon the name of Jesus, but I see a whole lot of mind-blinding spirits working against those who have called upon the name of the living God. They've never been willing to move forward beyond just that, that initial introduction to this glory realm. But I think better things of you. I believe better things of you tonight. Hallelujah. I believe you would rather have the things of heaven than the things of the world. Hallelujah. Well, have, a, have, a, have, a, have, a, have a have a sit down for a minute. I hope you can't sit down long. Oh, tonight. I hope you, oh, hope you can't sit down long. You know, it, it seems that so many few people have even understood what holiness is and what the holiness of God is. He's exalted in the glorious, the glorious dimension of His holiness, which is absolutely otherness, transcendent otherness, separateness from everything that belongs to the world and everything that men have come to understood, uh, understand and know about the world. And He invites you and I to come into a place totally segregated, totally separated, only to His life, and there is no death there. And He's invited you in. And I'm telling you, there's pleasures forevermore there. I'm telling you, when you get filled up with, this thing, with these things of life and your eyes are open and you receive the spirit of revelation and knowledge, Satan can't pull your string and make you dance no more. All his lust of his flesh and all the lust of his eyes and all the pride of his life is, is just absolutely horrifying to you. It's twisted to you. You don't want anything. All, all you do is the response you get... Uh, the response he gets from you is you rise up and rebuke him sharply in the name of Jesus. The only response he gets from you when he begins with all of his filth and lies and temptations is you cast him out. Hallelujah. <laughs> you break off his yoke and tell him that he can't mess with you nor no one else either. Hallelujah. You don't tell him they got to mess with somebody else. You just send them away. I believe if God's people would start acting like the hinderer of iniquity that we're supposed to be, we'll see some glory in the place. I'm telling you right now, Father's got, God, Father's got a whole lot more he wants to do than what's been allowed, what's been, what's been happening, you know. Uh, much of the church looks just like the prophets during the day of, of, of many of, of the last moments in the, in the history of the nation, the northern kingdom of Israel, and the last moments of the history of the nation of Judah. They're walking around getting drunk on juice. Fermented leaven juice. They're walking around getting all intoxicated. They got the cup of wrath in their hand. They got the cup of judgment. They're walking around so intoxicated, so intoxicated, not only on the beverage of demonic communion, which is alcohol, intoxication, but they also drunk all on, on the things that belong to their own self-interest and to this world. But God's people, I mean, you know, it's beautiful to see. You see the mess that's going on Judah. And then all of a sudden you see a Daniel. Huh? And you see the, the, the three companions of Daniel standing alongside of him. My goodness, they're not touching any of the king's meats. They're not touching any of the king's da dainties. You know, they're not any of his juice. And they're saying, look, we got a special diet. Just give us some porridge. We'll live off of oatmeal and spinach. Amen. <laughs> 
<laughs> Man, I tell you right now, this is a wonderful time. This year is a wonderful time. 2015 is a time where God's people who know him. There's some people on the earth that know God. They don't just know about him. They're not religious. They got a relationship. They call. Father answers. They ask. And, and, and Father gives. And, and these people who know the Lord, uh, these folks, there, there's some people who know the Lord, but they're not strong. There's other folks who know the Lord and they're strong. And I'm telling you, this is a great year for those who know the Lord and they are strong because this is a year of exploits. You know, we just really want to, you know, encourage all of you who, who really know how to pray. And I mean, go after it. You know how to go after it in the spirit. You know how to change things around as, uh, by the Holy Ghost and, and prophecy. You know, let me just stop and say this. People, you're going to have to learn how to prophesy over yourself before you're going to break anything else in the exterior to you. You're going to have to have the word of God in your heart and your mouth. You're going to have to learn to declare the good things of God over you. You're going to have to learn to prophesy those things which Father said about you. Somebody said, oh, somebody prophesied over me. I was going to do this great thing. Listen, man, God's prophesied over you so many things and you've barely done any of them. Start with what Father has prophesied. And it's good to see you, man. Love you back there. Hallelujah. 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 We, we, we got something big cooking right now. We've got something big. It's, it's one of the last holdout communist nations that... Uh -huh. <laughs> it was one of the last... Kurabakashi Tanane. It was the one of the Asatera. One of the last holdout communist nations that the saints of God have been on their knees praying, crying out to God for deliverance. Praying, crying out to God for, for a shaking to come for... My goodness, probably close to 70 years. And all of a sudden, the doors open to us, and we planning a huge crusade in there probably about May and expecting that the stadium that is in the middle of their capital city is going to be jam-packed with about 55,000 people. People are going to be trying to climb up over the walls to get inside. They're going to get whatever it takes, you know. It, it's going to be that way because the Lord's getting ready to say hello to another nation that's been held in prison. Hallelujah. Holy, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost can walk out and say, hello. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is so exciting. I mean, this thing so happened so quick. You know, when, when, I, when I first received a telephone call and said that from, uh, from, you know, from a friend of mine that said, hey, you know, uh, the king just gave his power over to parliament. It was 2006. It was the last uh, part of April in 2000. And six, and he said, hey, the king just gave his power over to parliament. The first freedom has come to Nepal. You know, who knows, 2,000 years, really, a 40 year, over 40-year war had been going on, just all kinds of chaos and upheaval. And as soon as I heard that, the Spirit of the Lord said, strike. And, man, we ran after it. And, of course, we saw a great awakening come to a nation where we stood actually in the capital of, of Kathmandu, Nepal, in their national stadium. And, you know, I mean, I think, I, I think the last time I looked, there was probably something like, there was close to, you know, 60,000 views of that crusade um, that uh, we just put out there as public domain. I didn't ever attach my name to it. Just put Jesus all over it because uh, you can see my mug standing up there on the platform. That's good enough that we even just got to even participate with them. And then so what happened is not too long ago, just recently, just recently, I heard that this nation opened, the na this nation's door cracked open. And as soon as I heard about this nation's, this door cracking open in this nation for an opportunity for the gospel to be preached in that nation. Well, they haven't given an opportunity for the gospel to be preached. I'm just saying the door just cracked open. I heard of the Spirit, the door cracked open. And then, and then we heard some things announced actually from our government about it. <laughs> Boom, we the Lord says, strike, and uh, I mean, hallelujah, things begin to start happening. Miraculous things have already started happening. I'm telling you, the whole thing is already underway. Awesome. I'm not going to talk about this specifically about the nation right now because it's on YouTube, it's on the web, and I'm just going to keep it under wraps because, you know, the Lord goes in when everybody's all confused, don't know what's going to happen on us, what's really going on, and spoils the whole camp. Amen. Just ruins them for the kingdom of God. The Lord's about to shake a nation. And listen to me. The Lord's about to shake another nation. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, you people, people, people got their concept of how it's supposed to go down. They got their logistics and their plans. Pooey. For lack of a better word. Nonsense. 
What we do is we stand here praising God, giving thanks, just being who we are. Nobody, he, he, nobody of ourselves, but everything in him. And then all of a sudden he says, come over here, son of man, speak over here. Hey, come here, I got something for you to do over here. And then we go do it, and then we, do, and, and we don't go. I mean, there's too many times people take these opportunities of God, and then they go ahead and they... Uh, they do terrible things with it. They make a business out of it, and they make a name for themselves. I'd rather stand up here in his presence and just worship him and wait on him till he grabs me up by the hair of my head like he did Ezekiel. He says, come over here, and sets me down in a little place and says, now speak all the words of life which I have put in your mouth. And then we watch effortlessly as God does signs and wonders and great miracles happen as the blind see. Baby born blind in here. Hold her up. Hold her up. Hold up, baby. The baby's born blind. She sees perfectly. It was many a number of years after the Lord healed her and opened up her eyes that she, any time the anointing and the moving of God began to increase. That's good. Thank you. Hey, sweetheart. Love you, baby. You're happy that we believe in miracles and signs and wonders. Amen. Yeah, you are. Hallelujah. Thanks, sweetheart. Thank you so much. Listen, I'm telling you. Um, <laughs> my, my, my. The cripple, the, the cripple walk, the deaf hear, the blind see. I have a friend of mine who's partnered with me in the, in the things that a lot of times that the Lord has us do in the nations of the earth. And he was in a place not too long ago. Man, you talk about being valiant. He was in a place not too long ago down in near Acapulco, Mexico. And uh, it was at the end of the meeting. And the Lord had done some wonderful things. I mean, some people who had been, who's, who were deaf and dumb, who deaf and mute had been in a meeting that he was did, did through about three years prior, prior. You know, they were in the meeting, they come out and talk, and, you know, everybody just gets all excited about that. But they brought up uh, some um, deaf and, and um, mute people when the meeting was already over. And when the meeting's over, it's over, and you're ready to go home. And it was the last night of the meeting, and my dear friends, my dear friend, was trying to get out, you know, and they blocked him right in the way and put these three deaf mutes in front of him. And then every camera came out of the woodwork, you know, to see, okay, we got to show you this ain't real. And so he, he is a valiant person, and he, he's really not interested in the stuff that a lot of people are in, like fame and notoriety and building the ministry, you know, and having a name for himself. He's just interested in doing the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so he started praying for this deaf mute, and the Lord, as he started to pray, the Lord said, whatever you do, do not stop. 45 minutes later, I said, 45 minutes later, 45 minutes later, he's still saying, I said in Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name, speak. I said in Jesus' name. Here, people are already leaving. They're starting to fade away. They're all, you know, listen to him. He just keeps on going. But see, he's valiant. God has strengthened him. He's become valiant in the things of God. He's a terror to the kingdom of darkness. Come on, man. He's not stopping with some little, I bless you prayer. And just, and, you know, there's, there's, when, the, when the trying of the faith comes, there's some people that are still proven to stand there shouting out God's word. And then, and then, uh, he, not only that, he's, he had the, the person he was praying for was stubborn and defiant and sitting there staring at him, shaking her head no and didn't want to be there and pulling away from him until all of a sudden she began to hear and she began to speak and tears began to pour down her face and she was broken. And then as soon as she heard and spoke, then it hit the next one and then the next one. That's just the way it is. It's a fire that breaks out. It's a Holy Ghost fire. It breaks out. Um, you know, I was raised in a time where we would have meetings, and this is the Pentecostal movement is by and large pretty much lost in so many respects. It's really lost to your generation to this modern time. I mean, the, the meetings back when I was growing up, they, they, you know, they, those meetings lasted, you know, two, three, four, five, six months to whenever the break came, till to whatever it broke. And it was like, it, it was like, you know, you come to the meeting, you sit in the meeting until you get whatever it is you need, whether it's, whether it's spiritual or physical or material. And because of the movings of God and because of what was going on at the time, people would do that. And, you know, it's just time now. It's just time now for another breakthrough. Yes. You know, the, 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 the ministers, and some of them are watching right now from the nation of Nepal, they wanted me to stay in Nepal and just do what, you know, I was taught to do from all the people from the healing revival. You know, I was, I was a little guy in the 60s. I was born 1959, and 
you know, uh, uh, but there was still a lot of things going on when I was a little guy in, in the 60s. And then, you know, uh, and then, I, of course, I got to be around all of those folks that God used in mighty ways in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s and the 50s. And also was still using them in the 60s. And so we got taught by them, you know, as the Lord instructed in them how to bring a breakthrough to a nation. Because there was a breakthrough in this nation. There were great signs and wonders and miracles. There was, uh, you know, a large majority of the people coming in, in the United States of America, coming to the Lord, seeking His presence, being touched by the power of God. And so many of the dear friends in the nation of Nepal just wanted me to stay in the nation and just go everywhere and, and preach the gospel throughout the nation because we can get on a main highway and, and basically you could, we could stop every 25, 30 kilometers running for probably 600 miles at least. And there's going to be a soccer field. And as soon as I walk out into the soccer field, there's going to be three to 4,000 people just to start. Because it just, it just, that's just the way it is, man. I and mean, we, you know, we, you know, you talk to Hindus. Hindus don't have any way to get, uh, Hindus don't have any way to be forgiven of their sins. There's like 59,000, you know, uh, cycles, as, life cycles as an insect or a lower creature to do, deal with your sin, that's about it, you know, that's what you want. And you say, hey, I got a way for you to have your sins completely washed away, totally forgiven. I'm going to tell you right now. So you, you're going to get some attention. We have, you know, in the meetings there, we, in the meetings there, we just have, every, we have everybody in the meetings there. All, you know, all the, all the police, all the military, all the captains and the generals and the mayor of the town, everybody comes out. They're standing in line to be prayed for. Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. It's a wonderful thing. And uh, just uh, the Lord just didn't allow me to do it. He's going he's to send somebody else to do it. And um, he's allowed us to do just a little bit of things there. And, you know, we just praise God because, you know, what's happening now with the Federation of Churches. And, you know, right now for me, Kashmir's on the radar. Bhutan's on the radar. I'm looking for, I'm looking for the places that still... Uh, you know, you can't, you can't do anything. Tim Hall just got finished shaking uh, Burma. He should be shaking Burma by the power of God. I, just call, I was just talking to him on the phone before I got here. He's going to be here by, he's going to be here Wednesday night. I'll get him to tell you what all God did in Burma. <laughs> Hallelujah. Capital city, Myanmar. And uh, so, uh, pow, powerful stuff. You know, I don't know, there's 50, 60,000. People every night in the meeting, every, every miracle of Jesus, every sign and wonder. You know, when Tim first started ministering in Papua New Guinea, we were just talking about Iri and Jaya, because I believe in Jarapura, what's going to happen is there's going to be such some incredible miracles. Friends of mine, uh, one friend of mine, is a, he, he, he has these greater works dreams, okay? He's a, wow, greater works dreams. He was in, we went into, in this dream, in this vision, we had gone into, uh, we had gone into Iri and Jaya, and we had gone into a headhunter's camp, and he grabbed a hold of a stick, and he, you know, he was he's a kind of a ferocious guy when he wants to be, and he stuck the stick in the ground, and he grabbed a head uh, that was there all dried out and everything. He stuck it on so top of the stick, and he said, in Jesus' name, live. And that person came back into existence and being, you know. And so what we really believe is we believe in these greater works miracles. Somebody said, that is fantastical. No, that's just believing for the impossible. That's just the miraculous realm of the power of God. He's, Father has entrusted us with so many things that we don't realize because we're too worried about what our bank account looks like. We're too worried about whether or not our car's nice enough. We're too worried about all of the stuff and the fluff. Give me a break, man. You're, get out of the earthly realm. Come on, forget about these things that it's here it is going to perish with the using. Set your affections on things above. Right there at the right hand of the majesty on high, there is a glory pouring out from that realm that you and I have been allowed to enjoin unto him, to be made one with him in that place, to be enjoined into the authority of that so that we're called co-inheritors with Christ Jesus, heirs of God. People want to make it in the future. It's now, and as soon as you recognize it, something different is going to start happening through your life. You're not going to relegate God to some natural, normal thing. I mean, the Mormons do more with a little bit of Jesus than most Christians. Are you listening to me? I'm about to, get, I'm about to bring it down here. Okay. Get out of the religion, man. Lead the religion to Mormons. Lead the religion to the supposed Jehovah's Witness. Lead the religion to every. Come on. Get into the relationship and oneness with God. Begin to walk this thing out. 
These are the days that Father is opening up nations. I mean, you know, when we stood even in 2006 and saw those great miracles and signs and wonders and God mobilized the nation, every person who knew Jesus came, began to be mobilized from those meetings. All many, the majority of the leaders came to that, to that meeting in 2006. 2008, the things that happened there as God broke open that nation. 2011, as it went to a whole other level and Father just spoke, he spoke to me, he said, this is the beginning of what I'm gonna do. If I would have spent my entire life in the nation of Nepal, I would have not seen even a fraction of what God did in a day. What God would do in a day for someone who will get hidden away and start believing in all the things that he has spoken, who won't be running to the doctors and constantly filling themselves with all that men can supply and depending upon the lawyers, but to begin to live like Christ Jesus showed us as he walked it out. We've, we've all become a bunch of sissy Christians. It's about time that we rise up in the boldness and the authority of faith and begin to move in the signs and wonders and miracles that God has given us. Hallelujah. I mean, why should you pay for that which Father has freely given you? For doesn't the Scripture say, say, these signs shall follow them that believe? Who's that a quote from? Yeah, but who's it a quote from? Do 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 you know your church history? I mean, this is like third century preachers that many people would call just religious. And we praise God for uh, uh, Christologos, huh? Because he is our, one of our affirmations and clear, rep, clear witnesses to Mark 16, 17 in the second and third century. Hallelujah. Praise God, it's about time God's people start rising up. And he was just from basically from the school of Alexandria. That would be like Episcopalians now. Because huh? there was a school of Antioch, those the Holy Ghost filled people. Those people, signs and wonders and miracles. Everybody around you is doing, doing signs, wonders, and miracles. Everybody around you understand their eyes their, have been opened up. They receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him to realize what inheritance he has in us, his holy ones, and the exceeding greatness of his power that he's placed within our hands that he's given to us when he raised Jesus from the dead, set him at his own right hand, and poured out from the majesty on high the promise of the Father, enduing us with power from on high so that rivers of living water would flow out of our belly that the knowledge of the Lord would be in this whole earth and cover this whole earth as the water covers the sea. It's about time you go ahead and sign up for the program. Get on board. Stop ministering to yourself in doubt and unbelief. Start making people make all these doctrinal excuses for sin. They make doctrinal excuses for allowing sin. They make doctrinal excuses for allowing sickness. Nonsense. Pooey. Nod says you not do nothing with that. You have no risk whatsoever of moving in the signs and wonders and miracles of Jesus. You're not at risk until you break free of all that stuff that belongs to the lies of hell that's trying to stop the kingdom of God. I'm telling you right now, th- th- this kingdom of the gospel we preach in all the earth as a witness to every nation, then the end should come. This, the, this, this gospel, the preach, kingdom that Jesus preached, the one he was demonstrating, the one he sent out the 12 to go and do. He said, he said just like he, go raise the dead, cast out the devils, cleanse the leper, tell the blind to see the deaf, to hear the mute to speak. Then he sent out 70 others also, told them exactly the same thing. And then he said, whosoever believes these works which I do, shall you do also. And then the book of Acts came as the baptism of the Holy Ghost was poured out and the fun began. And it's not stopped. It's not stopped. It's not stopped. God's going to open up. God's opening up doors of once in a lifetime, once in a generation, one time in history. Things are happening one time in history. Nepal has been held in the prison of a religious grip of Hinduism, being the kingdom of Hinduism for almost 2,600 years. Buddha is from Nepal. He's from a place right outside the city, Kawasuti. Nepal. Kashmir is held under such a grip. I mean, to see the gospel preached, ha, in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Ha, 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 it's a terror, a terror. I said, uh, ha, give me a break. 
Listen, these things have no, these things have not, don't have a chance against the gospel and the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. They're even just going to have to get the fear out. They're going to have to get the doubt out. And the only way you can do that is get the compromise out. You're going to have to get sold out. You have to be willing to come over in the holiness of God, be sanctified to living in a place called the holies of holies. Having received the anointing to dwell in him, the anointing was given in the Old Testament so that a man could stand in the holy place and be there in the holies of holies. The anointing is given to us in the New Testament so we can be in him and he be in us, one with him, dwelling in him. Hallelujah. Abiding in him. I mean, it's just going to be going to have to sort this thing out. What are you, earthly? Are you mere men? What are you? Or are you heavenly? Are you born of the Spirit? Or do you, are, you, are you the ambassadors of Christ Jesus? Have you received the authority of the living God? I mean, these are the days. You're not going to, if you don't even know how to praise your way out of some little doubt you in right now, my goodness, you're not even, you're not even prepared yet to do anything in God. Come on now. You're going to have to start prophesying go for yourself and start declaring the word of God over yourself. You're going to have to be willing to keep yourself in that which God has separated you to live in. Somebody said, what's the doctrine of sanctification? This is what it is. It's living out the life of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost. That's sanctification. You don't need a book on it. Just to, Somebody said, would you, write, would, you write a, would you write a book? Don't need to. The book's already been written. And I'll give it to you one, one small paragraph. Hallelujah. One sentence. Now, how about doing it? No, we distracted. We caught up with the cares of this life, deceitfulness of riches and pleasures of this world. CRP. Cares, riches, pleasures. CRP. Cares, riches, pleasures. I hope it can become that to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you looking like at me, looking at me right now, like, oh, that's what I'm doing. Well, you know, I kind of like it. I kind of like CRP. I hope you not like it anymore. I hope you be done with the CRP. In Jesus name, cares, riches, and pleasures, because all it's doing is choking you. It's got the choke hold on you. Some of you, most, a lot of people, you go to churches. Of course, not really around here as much, but so I mean, church and people are sitting there looking like they're being strangled. <laughs> it's just, it's the cares of this life. It's just a, it's a, it's a. Maybe it's just to me because the Lord allows me to see things in a prophetic way. And uh, just like people, it look, looks like they're just being, they're being suffocated. And it's the cares of the sly. Keeps you from bringing forth fruit. I want you to, I want you to consider some things with me tonight. I want you to consider. I want you to, I want you to consider. I'm going to try not to just quote scripture. I'm going to try to actually. Not that I'm not going to quote scripture. <laughs> but I'm going to try to slow down a little bit. I don't like slowing down. Patience, who has time for it? But at any rate, I want, I'm going to try to slow down, and I want you to open your Bibles, and I, I'm, going to, I'm going to read to you things that I would just soon quote, but I just want to see that you're actually looking at it, and so that there might be an opportunity that you'll begin to believe these things. Because right here in John chapter 1, in verse 16, the Scripture says, And of his fullness of all we received, and grace for grace. Look at that. Verse chapter 1, John chapter 1. John chapter 1, and of his fullness have all we received. People all wandering around, oh God, save us. Oh God, fill us. Oh God, win. The Lord says, will you quit with your prayers of doubt and unbelief, bemoaning your circumstances and complaining that I should be doing more? Should I say that again? Father saying, will you quit with your prayers of doubt and unbelief, bemoaning your circumstances and complaining that I should be doing more? Because so much of prayer consists of that. It's not the prayer of faith. It's not the prayer of the word. I hear, oh, God, save us. Oh, God, give me a clean heart. Ah. <laughs> he gave you clean heart. He gave you a new heart. He gave you a new spirit. He put his spirit on the inside of me. Oh, God, rent the heavens and come down. Let your river slow. Listen, he's already rimmed the heavens. They wide open. Jesus, the door, he's not shut. He's wide open. I pray that your eyes would be open. And you'll start seeing things different. Because when you do, you won't be so easily deceived. You won't, be so e you won't be so gullible with the things that Satan's, you know, spewing out of his shame. Huh? Spewing out. It's his shame. Spewing out like in puking. Spewing out. And people are like, ah, yeah, more. 
How do you expect us to live without this? It's just too much for us to live without this. I mean, you come on. What do you say? You tell me we can live without this? Yeah. You sit down at the table of the Lord, you'll, you, it'll be the barf that it is. It'll be the twisted, it'll be the twisted <laughs> death. Well, it's actually worse than that. But it's his spewings. It's his Satan. It's worse than that. Because, it, I mean, death. Death is all that can really describe that realm that people seem to can't live without. You need to get yourself over in the life, man. You start drinking this sweet, sweet water, you won't want your bitter water no more. Ha! Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. You start eating this wonderful fruits of the Spirit, you won't want your CRP no more. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Listen, this is, my goodness, it's going to be terrible for you guys to die and go to heaven having really not, if you were to not really accomplish that which God has empowered and trusted you and I to do. And, just, and then be ashamed. And the Lord says, hey, you know, I gave you all my authority. You just didn't believe it. I gave you all my power. I gave you all my resources. I'm just looking for somebody passionate and bold and not going to take no for an answer and willing to go. And as soon as the door cracks, we plow right through the thing. And we set everything in order. I told a dear friend of mine, I said, when you go in there, you tell them, man, we want that stadium for at least five days. Forget about the Price, tell all those people that have been praying for the past 70 years, fear not. The week we're here, don't worry about anything. God's in control. Make it big, and then once it's as big as it can possibly be in your thinking, then add to it and make it bigger. And then God's going to come alongside of it. He's not going to be hiding out, fearing and trembling in the back room. You're listening to me. These are the days to move in the power and, and, the, and in the spirit of the Lord. There's too many nations. There's too many nations. Hey, man, I can't wait to the crusade in Benghazi, Libya. I got first seated for Benghazi, Libya, 1980. I'm looking for the day for Syria, Damascus, Syria. I mean, walking in the fire and the glory of his presence. You know, we were going to have the crusade in Baghdad, Iraq. And we were going, that crusade was supposed to have actually taken place in right around October, and then it was right around August, September that we started, that the United States of America started bombing Iraq. I had dreams. I would have dreams of riding around with Saddam in his Jeep and him showing me all the things that he possessed that he was going to give to the kingdom because he was transformed by the power of God and filled with the Holy Ghost. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that Satan actually moves in the midst of even God's people to interrupt some great thing that God was going to do? That's why I said that that war was from hell. And so many people, I received so much persecution from, for, for the things that I declared. Saying it was unholy thing. It was the, it was the, it was the iniquity of men. It was not even, not, not justifiable in the slightest little way. Saddam is saying it opened up. Iraq for us to come in and minister. He had been meeting with different ministers for over four years. There was, he was being seated for the gospel. My, what God would have done. I'm telling you right now, I'm about ready to start kicking things over. Somebody's going to have to ride up, rise up and take charge of the place. Because the Lord told you and me to make disciples out of nations. And it looks like nations making disciples out of the church. Telling the church what to do. Telling you what you can say and what you can't say. Where you can go, where you can't go. Nonsense. Pooey. Oh, yeah. Come on now. Start moving. So I said, oh, we're going to risk our life. Good. You die. The worst thing that can happen to you is that you die and go to heaven. That's the worst thing that can happen to you. Come on. And I'm telling you right now. Hallelujah. The, the, father, I'm, the Father's going to have a ra radical and ferocious people. And if the people aren't going to respond and there's not going to be radical and ferocious people, then Father's going to let us who are radical and ferocious live for a very long time. <laughs> I tell you, Greater Works Ministry is going to be quite something. People walking around 250 years old. <laughs> Hallelujah. How old are you, 250? Hallelujah. Somebody said, you think that there's going to be that much time left? Yeah, you know, I expect the Lord Jesus Christ coming at any moment. Paul thought he was going to, you know, the Lord has, has kept that concealed. 
You know, uh, Paul thought he was going to come during his lifetime. He said, we which are alive, we which are alive, we which are alive. Some people don't understand that, so I say it over and again. We which are alive and remain should be caught up together with him to meet him in the air. <laughs> and you say, oh, we're going to go through the tribulation. That's just modern nonsense. Uh -huh. So they never read Revelation chapter 19 and recognized that the marriage supper of the Lamb uh, <laughs> takes place a, a long, before uh, the Lord Jesus Christ comes down out of heaven to fight the battle of Armageddon. If you're not at the marriage supper of the Lord Jesus Christ, you just missed out. Sorry. Amen. Oops. Yeah. I know you had faith to go through the tribulation. How'd that work for you? <laughs> it ain't going to work for you at all. i tell you right now. People perish for lack of knowledge. I, I know that one thing is so important for God's people is that in these last days, they start reading the Bible. <laughs> you need to start at Genesis 1-1, read through to Revelation 22-21. It'd take you about 90 days if you read an hour a day. And after a while, after about four readings a year, and after a few, after a while, and after crying out to God for an understanding, all of a sudden you're going to have a different perception of how things really work in the kingdom of God and what's expected of you. I'm telling you, the men of God that, uh, that, that are already dead and gone now, they said the one of the most important, uh, they're, you know, their they're cries and their pleas to us. I remember hearing them over and again. The cries and the pleas. Hey, the most important thing that you're going to have to have in these last days is the discernment of spirits. Because of the seducing spirits, the, the apostate age is upon us. On a level that Paul warned about during his lifetime, and it was pretty bad during his lifetime. People got to get out of your doubt and unbelief. Start prophesying over yourself concerning the things that God says concerning you. you the temple of the living God. You've been filled with the Holy Ghost. He lives in you, walks in you. Christ dwells in you. You put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You're a new creation. You have the divine nature. You've been given the gift of righteousness and true holiness. He's recreated you after his own image. He's empowered you. Come on. He's given you airship, sonship. You're not like a child anymore. Life differs no more from a servant. But now you're son. Sons, matured sons, empowered by the living God. Jesus said, the glory which Father gave to me, I've given it to you so that you can be just like us. I said I wasn't going to quote scripture. <laughs> just so that you, in case you didn't know that one, that's, that was John 17, 21 through 23, and it's time you get out your rut of unbelief because you're looking ugly there. And you're giving false witness to who Jesus is there. And I'm provoked about it. You listen to me. I'm sorry, I can't help it. This way God made me. Amen. Amen. And he testifies to it. You rise up and start shining. Get up, on, get, up, get up out of your shame and step on over into his glory. Get up out of your doubt and unbelief and start moving in faith. Oh, I want to move in faith. Just move in the word, man. You'll be moving in faith. Oh, if I could just have more faith. Just get more word. Just obey God's word. It's really simple. God's not made it mystical. It's not magical. It's not some esoteric thing. You listen to me. You come under the yoke. You come under the rule. You don't defy authority anymore. Don't draw back. Fall down and repent. It's time, Holy Ghost, conviction be in the house of God again. It's time that there be a grip of the Holy Ghost. Conviction in the land. Because there's no light. When God's people resist the Holy Ghost or won't come under his instruction and his conviction. How then can they, how then can the lost ever see? How then can the lost ever experience that which is supposed to flow through you and me in the first place? That's why the Lord, that's why Paul called us the hinderer of iniquity. Uh, in Second Thessalonians. But I don't know, man. I, I wonder sometimes about just how much hindrance is going on. La cabrese to you. Listen, Father's given you, God, Father has given you beauty for ash ugliness. Come on, why stay in the ugly? Why stay in the ash? He gave you beauty for ash ugliness. Are you listening to me? He's beautified the meek. I mean, why not have the, the appearance of the king's seed rather than walking around like just, you know, everyday, ordinary, bummed out people? No, I and mean, just we want you to start shining. We want you to hook up with that which Father has supplied, that which Father has given. And of his fullness, have all we say, of his fullness. Of his fullness. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I'm gonna, I would try to go through this systematically, but it's very difficult. If I started going through all the things the Father's declared concerning who you and I are, 
in him. What he's done for us, the finished work. Everybody wants to still have an old nature and have some process sanctification going on so that they got an excuse to lay aside the weight of sin which they never lay aside. Are you listening? I know I'm a wild guy. I know it. I can't help it. Listen, people say, my goodness, who is this person? I don't know. It's, uh, you, this is just how it is for me. I am just filled up with this zeal of the Lord. And, and, I, and I, I'm desperate to see some people of God start moving in and faithfully. You know, it's like somebody gets a little move of God and has it once a year and we think we have in revival. How about when God's people step into the anointing and that which they want is, is the expressions of the Holy Spirit more than anything else. When you start singing the song to the point that you believe it, you're all that I desire and all that I need. Yeah. Ah, there's a lots of folks got lots of other desires too. Oh, Lord, you're one of my desires. I know I prioritize you a lot. Forgive me. You're one of the things that I need, even though you're kind of down on the list. Because I'm happy with you so long as I've got one, two, three, and four. <laughs> if I don't have one, two, three, and four, I'm going to be starting. I'm going to start accusing you and start blaming you. I'm going to get mad at you. And I'm going to wonder why you've left me here, all alone. I surrender half. I surrender half all, all to you, Lord. <laughs> Please come on now. It ain't hard. It's not hard to walk with the Lord. It's not hard. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. You're just going to demand complete and total change or you're going to have to come under the rule. You're going to have to pass under the rod. Rule. Rod. Obey. Uh, what are you talking about? I'm talking about coming into the kingdom of God where Christ Jesus, who is already king of kings and lord of lords, who is able to even to, able to humble kings like Nebuchadnezzar, whom God raises up to rule the whole world. And when his heart gets too stout, he says, okay, go eat grass like an ox. To where the day so suddenly comes and his eyes are open and he realizes that God rules in the kingdom of man. We want your eyes to be open, dear people. We want you to come to understand. We want you to come to believe the things that God has said. This is the faith by, by which righteousness comes from. It's just being born from above, being not of this world, even as he's not of the world. To belong to a heavenly realm, that place where Elijah has been standing in the presence of the living God now for 2,600 years. And Enoch's been there for about 4,900 4, and some odd. Standing there seeing the glory. Come on, man. Come on, get out your stuff. Get out your doubt. Get out of, get out of all of your issues. And just give yourself over to the Lord Jesus Christ because you're supposed to be crucified with him. You're supposed to be buried in him by baptism into his death. Your life is supposed to be hid in him. You're supposed to see, seek those things which are above. Set your affections on things above, not upon things of this earth. For you are dead. Ah, and your life is hid with Christ and God. So that when Christ who is our life appears, we shall also appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't hardly quote that verse of scripture. <laughs> of course, which is Colossians chapter 3, 1, 2, 3. Without saying, hey, you know, beloved, now are we the sons of God and does not yet appear what we should be, but we know when we see him, we'll be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everybody has this hope, purifies himself, even as he is pure. I mean, we lay hold of to that one, we lay hold of this wonderful place of holiness and purity and glory that he's given to us. And we don't want to be unclean and we don't want to be contaminated. But if we get unclean and we get contaminated, and because we don't want to be one moment unclean and contaminated, we call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He takes his blood and cleanses us from all unrighteousness so we remain intact, pure, and holy. Hallelujah. Unblameable, unrebukable. Unreprovable in his sight. Uh, with garments spotless, yea, whiter than snow. You can go ahead and have your little job and have your little bank account and do your little 401k thing if you want to. Meanwhile, you've missed out on all the signs and wonder and majesty of the fullness of the power of God where he's providing for you. He is, he is supplying to you all that you have need of and resourcing you with everything that belongs to, him, to himself. To, to he himself. This is what the word says. This is the word of the Lord. Three amens. The rest of you. What did he just say? 
Ki toko manesea. Brosere ki mando ki si batu in kinga dakenea. So come ne exe pe eke tus tahati. Lebara se turmos sekina. Hambala ki katani. Habala ki katane esse. Hala poranai. Hale porane shipaya. Hale lu paranea. You know, seeing as we're right here in John and it's just right across the street, let's look at Luke 24 49. Because I, I, if, can you just believe this? Can you just prophesy this stuff over yourself? Can you just get up in the morning and say, I have his fullness of I've, I've already received all of his fullness. Jesus cried out and said, If you're thirsty, come and drink. Out of your belly shall flow rivers, rivers of the expressions of God's life. Rivers. Not a squirt, not a trickle, not a wadi, which is a small brook in the, in the desert that only runs. When, when there's a, when, during the rainy season, it's dry for the rest of the time. A lot of people live a wadi Christian life. Huh? When it's rain, they're flowing. When there's no rain, I mean, when it's rain, they're a torrent. I mean, goodness gracious, watch out, flash flood. Watch out, this is Shamu zone, I'm sorry. It's flash flood. It's flash flood, but then if there's no rain, dry. The Lord has purposed for us to be ha robo sakara de. The Zambezi and the Niagara all at the same time. Victoria Falls converging, converging on uh, Niagara Falls. My goodness, what a blast of divine power and glory. Should be coming through everybody's life, coming forth through everybody's life. Rivers of God pouring out of us into the ocean of His great love until the water covers the earth, uh, until the glory of the God covers the earth as the water covers the sea. Where there's no more dry land. A flood. A flood, a flood is coming, a flood, the floodgates are open, Father's about to mow down all the stuff that's been going round, Father's about to take it out, with a word, with one word, with one word. Father's devoted to the glory of his son, he's put this thing, same kind of passion on the inside of me. And everyone he's got prophesying in his name right now here on planet Earth. Father's going to, Father's devoted to Jesus being exalted, being magnified, come to being honored. Hallelujah. Uh, come to be adored in the midst of all of the saints. Oh, I pray that you'll allow the praises to take hold of you. Uh, you know, somebody said, why do you like to go to church so much? Well, because I love heaven. And church is as close as I can get he to heaven right now. That's why I like to be in church all the time. That's why I said, oh, well, I go to a terrible church. If I went there, it'd be glorious. I tell you, I went into the Vatican because I went to study in the Vatican Library, do some research I was involved in. I was in the Vatican. I can go into hell. Prison at, day, prison at midnight after having been stripped naked and beaten. Look at Paul and Silas's model. Come on, give me a break. There's oppressive. Well, if there's oppressive, you're supposed to break oppressive. Huh? Come on. Give me a break. Hallelujah. Quick, get, get rid of your excuses. Get rid of your doubt and your unbelief. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Champions make plays. <laughs> it's time to make some plays and the kingdom of God starts moving some stuff around. Amen. Somebody said, well, how do I do that? Simple relationship with the Lord. It's not by networking. It's not by getting a leg up from somebody. It's not by associating with some bigger ministry. It's about you getting hid in a place in God, right, Christ Jesus, right there in the secret place of your life. You become devoted to his praise. You become devoted to knowing him. He'll come find you on the backwoods of nowhere and take you and raise you up and say, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? I mean, to receive glory and honor from the Father is far better than to receive glory and honor. So, ah, I got my little, my little, you know, degrees hung up on the wall. Oh, I don't really put them up there for me. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> we boast ourselves in our pride. God help us. Listen, and then we sit around, bemoan our circumstances, complain he should be doing more. Oh, God, when? He's already done it. Faith has already laid hold upon it. 
Faith calls those things which are not as though they were. And this is faith that calls those things that have already been done because they are. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I mean, goodness, at least Abraham had a re could have had a, had a reason. But yet he called those things which are not as though they were. And Father's already established it. He's brought it to pass. He who cannot lie has sworn by an oath by his own self and says it's done. And we're asking him to do it. And it's time to get out of that nonsense. Get out, huh? Deny yourself. Somebody said, well, can we get that over with quickly? Daily. Daily. Hey, you quit laying aside your way to sin or whatever that thing is. Because everybody I know that's been doing that haven't gotten made any progress for the past 40 years. <laughs> and I'm certain they're not going to make any progress from henceforth because it's not a faith. And what's not a faith ain't going to move nothing, ain't going to change anything. There's not going to be any miracle there. You're listening to me. Hallelujah. So instead of doing all that stuff, go ahead, go on to perfection, having laid the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith towards God. And go ahead and now begin to move in to these things that the Father has applied to us. Lay it, go ahead and apply yourself to that which he's given. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow him. That's a lot better than laying aside some way to sin. Dragging some way along. Why are you up here? I'm up here tonight. I'm up here, Pastor, because I need to lay aside the weight. Well, why don't we break that yoke off of you? Well, how about the perpetual backsliding? How about the perpetual backsliding? Every perpetual backslider I've read about in the Bible never made heaven. They continue to perpetual backslider. It's a disease. God, the Holy Ghost, is the only one who has the cure. Amen. And there's got to be some radical changes. And people are perpetual backsliders who have justified their state for so long. Because, see, self-justification is actually self-righteousness. People self-justify all the time. Oh, this is why we are the way we are. This is why we do what we do. God knows. He understands. No, he doesn't know nothing. doesn't understand anything you're talking about. His word declares absolutely something different. That's self-justification. That's self-righteousness. Father wants you to have God-righteousness. He, Jesus, bore our sins. He became the sacrifice, the sa sin sacrifice, sin offering for you and me so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He bore our sins on the tree that we might be made the righteousness of God. Having been cut off, to sin, cut off from sin, now might live under righteousness. Hallelujah. You know, I thought tonight Bob was just going to minister on, um, on Romans chapter 6. I'd love to minister on Romans chapter 6. You know, but the Lord just put this word in my mouth. He, he, Father wants to provoke you into good works. He wants you to stand up and believe him to be who he is. He was saying, oh, God, do this, do that. He said, no, it's time for you to rise up. You know, it's like in the Old Testament. They said, away. They're saying, awake, awake, oh, God, as in the days of old. Oh, God, when you destroyed the dragon and wounded Rahab. Rahab is a name for Egypt. It means defiance. Dragon represents Egypt as well. And he turns and he says, Awake, you wake up. You awake and put on your garments, your holy garments. Huh? Father has supplied the glory. The promise of the Father has come. Let me read this to you. It happened 2,000 years ago. And Father didn't take it back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Holy Ghost isn't just visiting from time to time. You know, once a generation, he comes down with a big yawn. Oh, he just woke up. Listen, he's living here. He's zealous about these things. The zeal of the Lord should consume you. You start communing with Father, and everything that is in his passion and his heart is going to be in your passion and your heart. And you're going to act different, talk different, look different. Amen. I pray you're far more ferocious looking than me. I pray you're far more passionate than me. I pray that you grab a hold of praise and thanksgiving and loving him so that your eyes may be open. Because I'm going to tell you, Father retains all rights to revelation. And the more you obey, the more you get to see. Just that simple. You obey the tuggings and the call of the Holy Ghost. And you respond to him and you call upon his name. And suddenly your eyes are open to a whole new realm of living in Christ Jesus. And that's just the beginning. It's, it's, it, goes, it goes beyond. I'm getting ready to go over someplace and talk to the beyond. About the beyond here in just a minute. If I don't get translated in between time. Hallelujah. You know, tonight I pray that you'll allow the Holy Spirit to have full control of your life. People talking about, I want to go to a church where the Holy Ghost has room to work. Why don't you let him work through you? Amen. <laughs> 
right here, wherever you at. That's the point here. Come on now. I mean, it's time to get the Holy Ghost charge of your life so that there's some number is not mistakable. He is, she is full of the Holy Ghost. He is moving in the Basta Coramanda. Lay aside by you, not, you, you are zealous for good spiritual gifts. You covet the spiritual expressions of the Holy Ghost, the supernatural working of the power of God. Here we read about it right here in Luke chapter 24, verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you. Wow. Behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you. Tarry in Jerusalem until you're endued from power, with power from on high. And somebody said, hey, did you, re- did you guys go over there? Did you get what you wanted? Well, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. We're just believing it. We're taking it by faith. I guarantee you, you wouldn't. Peter wouldn't have said, well, you know, I'm not really sure. I think, I think, you know, we had this event. I'm not. Hallelujah. Come on, people. Get over here in this realm till something happens that you can identify and be certain about. The promise of the Father. Who? Oh, the promise of the Father. I mean, you think about the value. You think about the pledge. You think about His goodness that has poured this out upon us. The, ava- the promise of the Father speaks of, his, of what He is available to you and me. And see, as I want to go to Ephesians, I'm going to have to stop off by way of Acts chapter uh, 1, verse 5, seen as in verse 4 and 5, seen as I just, we just read that. And, uh, and being assembled together, hallelujah, it's one of the last things Jesus said while he, while he was here on the earth at that, in that season. Hallelujah. Don't you want to meet Jesus? Yeah. Would you like to spend some time with him? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Prakat say it. Well, he was going to, he's going to retain, he's going to stay in an invisible realm until something happens on the inside of you that can only happen while he's invisible. And if you let that happen, it's going to become visible. And, and what's going to take place in the midst of that is your eyes are going to be open. You're going to be able to see what Father is doing and why he's doing it. And you're going to join yourself and unite your heart to fear the Lord. The things that are going on in the realms of the Spirit, the things that are going on in the realm of the heavenlies, the things that are going around on in the presence of the Father is going to be more important to you than the things that have been, impo- that have been important within the framework of your earthly concerns. Huh? People aren't in an earthly sojourn. They're in earthly concerns in too many situations. Father wants you to be a stranger and a pilgrim here and to seek a kingdom which, whose builder or maker is the Father. But yet he's taking it to another level. He's come to live on the inside of us. He's come to live alongside of us. He's come to Sodomaya. He's come to Mosaretaya. He's come to show us things. He's come to give us dreams and visions and, and, and revelation. He's come to operate and move through our life and express things through our life on a level that is can't even begin to be imagined. I'm going to talk about it here in just a few minutes. I want to just hold off from quoting those verses of Scripture because I want to show them to you so you'll get happy and believe God tonight and be changed for now and forevermore. And about the time you're about ready to speak doubt out your mouth, you'll hold yourself, you'll get some duct tape. When you got the urge, you'll put some gorilla tape around your mouth and say, until I can speak aright, I don't want to speak at all. Huh. You're not going to say, it's not going to be doubt, expressions of doubt and unbelief anymore. Oh, God, what are you going to change my heart? Oh, God, give me a new heart. Oh, God. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's rather going to be, thank you, Father, for that which you've done. I might not understand it, but you did it, and you said you did it, and I'm going to agree with you because you know more than I do. Huh. you got a better vantage point, a better perspective, a better view from where you stand. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, if people uh, were saved based upon their understanding, everybody would be lost. If Father was valuing based upon how much you know and understand concerning his thoughts and his mind, and nobody's going to make it. He hadn't left it. He just said, come follow me. I'll take you into wisdom. Come follow me. I'll show you understanding. Come follow me. I'll show you the ways of life. I'll show you the paths of life so that you can walk in them. And Abraham just moved in faith and obeyed God even though he didn't know where he was going. He just moved in faith. He obeyed God. Hallelujah. That's what you need to start doing. And being assembled together, command them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said, He, you have heard of me. <laughs> Jesus getting poetic. Hallelujah. Here's Jesus' last command. For John truly baptized with water, but you should be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. It's the ministry of Jesus. It's the ministry of Jesus. You'll be baptized. Somebody said, well, what's the difference between baptized and being filled? Nothing. There is no difference. Huh? Somebody said, can you prove it? Yeah, now look at Acts chapter 2. 
Huh? When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all gathered together in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. Clothing tongues of fire rest upon each one of them. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean, filled, baptized, their equivalent. The Lord says, don't be drunk with wine, wearing his excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And people just sit around. Filled with their problems. Filled with their issues. Filled with their complaint. Filled with more more TV, filled with more CNN, filled, well, I like Fox better than CNN. They're owned by the same people. Uh, the writers say, let's, let's spend this one for the conservatives so that they'll watch it and we'll make money out of them. And then we'll just they take the say, now spend it just over here for the liberals. And, and then we just sit there and believing it, walking out, believing it. Now, it's nothing to do with faith. It has nothing to do with reality. It's all a deception. It's all a lie. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's true. <laughs> hey, come on, people. Let's step over here into the light so we can see what's really going on. It's tough trying to figure out what's, what's taking place in the midst of this black darkness. Amen. Let's get, up. get out of the shadows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah! In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, <laughs> I'm going to try to make this short. <laughs> Somebody said, where did you learn your style of preaching from? <laughs> well, you know, Paul, he preached so long that the guy was sitting in the window. He got the wrong seat. And he, uh, he was a long time preaching, and the guy fell down. Sleep fell, well, 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 he fell asleep, fell down two stories. They took him up dead. Paul went down, raised the dead, got him back up so he had somebody listen to him and preach the rest of the night. And then he got up in the morning went to the next town. <laughs> like we, get, we only got a few here anyways, man. Let's get this guy. We don't, can't afford to lose anybody. <laughs> it, Paul is an amazing preacher. Jesus, he acted just like Jesus. He showed us, he showed us that a normal, everyday, def God defying man could step in to every dimension of the ministry and the life of Jesus Christ and live out a life full of the glory of God. He is the model. Jesus the model son. And, and Paul is the model of the model Christian of anybody who believe in Christ Jesus, believe in the Son, receive power from on high. Paul was such a troublemaker, they sent him home right away. He's going to get us all killed, send him back to Tarsus. <laughs> he was 17 years being he was 17 years being prepared to God after having had seen Christ Jesus on the road to Damascus, went out into Arabia, received abundance of revelation. He was full of zeal and determination to see every man come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Then after having been in Tarsus, Barnabas went and brought him back down to Antioch. He was there submitted to the church and to them that were over him, prepared of God for 17 years to go out and preach the most radical display of the power of God for about 15 years. Oh, come on, people. Should you resign yourself today to no longer live your own life, but to live this life of Christ Jesus, to lose your life that you might find the one that he's given, to value his life as better than the life that you could live, to see it's far more wonderful to be able to have that which he has given as a gift and fully seize upon that which Father has freely given to us. Oh, my. Oh, my. My, just, just what God would do with your life in just one day, in one month, in one year, in the rest of your lifetime. Oh, to step over into that glory and stand there with a the mighty host and not be ashamed because you didn't do nothing but worry about your bank account. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yeah, do worry. All you did is worry about your stuff and wonder whether or not somebody loved you. <laughs> Talk nice about you. Made you comfortable. Powder, uh, baby powdered your pew before you got to the meeting. I've had people say, is he allowed to talk to us like that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a license. 
I have a license. I'm here to tell you tonight that God, the Holy Ghost, has come to empower you to be able to ask Father whatever you want in the name of Jesus and He will do it. I'm here to tell you tonight that according to John chapter 15 verse 16, God called you and He ordained you so that you would bring forth a special kind of fruit, a fruit that all the earth could see. They see you standing there and ask Father for something and He respond and give to you whatever you say. But that's not going to happen until you're willing to do whatever He says. You're going to have to find, you're going to have to find the happy land of the overcomer. <laughs> the Balopokashaya, the Babasateranai, the abundant life. Hallelujah. Of those who have been crucified with Christ, buried with Him by baptism into His death. Hallelujah. Raised up together with Him, alive together with Him, and seated together with Him in a heavenly realm. Amen. 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 Say, I'm crucified with Christ. Say, I'm buried with baptism into His death. Say, I'm raised up together with him. Say, I'm alive together with him. Say, I'm seated together with him in a heavenly realm. Now, Father, open my eyes and give me understanding that I might know that this is the truth. Uh, if I, you know, if you just have the spirit of revelation and knowledge of him, if you just have the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, to just know this, to know that this is reality. You're not going to get distracted. And I'm going to tell you right now, the Holy Spirit wants to cause you to see this. Jesus' ministry is right now all about baptizing you and me and filling you and me. So when we come to the rock, Christ Jesus, and we ask for water, the water is going to come out. When we speak to the rock, we ask for water, the water is going to come out. He's going to fill us up with his life. If we depend upon him, if we look inside, if we look to ourselves, we're not going to have anything. But if we begin to have a relationship with him, a viable, real relationship with him where we ask and he answers, come on, people, devote yourself to it. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to get the reward of it if you'll do it. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now. Without faith, it's impossible to please Father. Hallelujah. You're not going to receive glory and honor from the Father until you're going to be willing to move in faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those that come to Him must believe that He exists, that He is, that He's here right now. And that He's a rewarder of anybody who diligently seeks Him, who lays hold on Him, won't be turned aside, won't, won't move, won't back down. Huh? Just like a tree that's planted by the water, I shall not be moved. People are too soon moved, you know. Be, their, their faith is too soon shaken. They're not willing having to done all, all having to do having done all stand and to continue to stand. Uh, if there's anything that people need to understand how to do by the Spirit of the Lord is to take up the shield of faith. If people get a doctor's report and it looks like it's bad, and immediately you're sitting there and you hire more doctors. And then I get all the for people to get all offended. You telling me I can't have a doctor? Well, I hope you lose your insurance plan. Amen. And that it costs you more money, so that you'll think about it more. If you want to go to the doctors, go to the doctors. But you're never going to move in miracle faith. You're never going to move in signs, wonders, miracles, faith because it's a mixture. And I, oh yeah, I'm in throwback, I'm old fashioned. I had somebody tell me I was from the 1500s. Man, take me back further than that. I'm like from zeros. I'm from the time where Jesus, I'm like, I'm back further than the 1500s. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to be all the way back to the days of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, I, he's real to me. He's real. He's so real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. He's the healer as much as he is the Savior. Uramangadeh, as much as he is the Lord. Halamangadeh, as much as he is the King. Oh, Father wants to fill you up with all these wonderful good things. He wants to minister to you. He wants to strengthen you by his spirit in your inner being so that you can believe him. So that you can rise up in faith that you don't have to depend upon the doctors and, and, and pull out your sickness every day and give it a couple of strokes and say, isn't it ugly? Isn't it terrible? It's mine, though. So I don't have many things, but this is one thing I've got. Ah, uh, that you'd rise up in faith and be able to break off all of the strongholds and the afflictions and the torments and the lies that Satan tries to cripple you with, tries to distract you with. Because I'm telling you right now, if you've called upon the name of the Lord, he has targeted you to take you out.
But you need not worry. Should you be willing to find yourself hidden Christ Jesus? He can't touch you. The wicked one can't touch you. You inaccessible. You untouchable. We know. I should say they knew. They knew. <laughs> but I'm going to say we know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he keeps himself, and the wicked one cannot access and cannot touch him. I write unto young men, because you're strong, the word of God abides in you, and you've defeated Satan at every point. Where are they? Right here. Right here. <laughs> I pray in the name of Jesus, you'll start, you'll start dealing with the things that God has given you the power and the authority to deal with properly so that he can raise you up to go ahead and move on into sonship ministry and, and begin to advance the kingdom of God into every territory and every nation of the earth. I pray that you'll believe all the Father has supplied and all that he has provided. And you won't have an excuse for you no more. Because if you won't have an excuse for you no more, you'll cease from self-righteousness. And you'll move into God-righteousness. And you'll get down on your face and you'll seek the Lord until you have that which he describes. Instead of the make-believe. Too many people live by imaginations instead of living by the word of the Lord. It's time to start living by the word of the Lord. If you'll live by the word of the Lord, you listen to me. You'll live in faith. You'll move in faith. You'll get built up in faith. You'll increase in faith. It's supernatural faith. It's the faith of God. It's the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the faith that changes the landscape of humanity. It subdues nations. It, it, it puts to flight the armies of the alien. It quenches the violence of fire. Escapes the edge of the sword. Stops the mouths of lions. Made strong out of weakness. Hallelujah. Works righteousness. Oh, Rabbi, say it, say it Walks in the divine nature and character, the care, excellence of character, hallelujah, of the Holy Ghost. Having now being ruled by the Spirit, seeing the Holy Spirit rules my spirit. Now, having given myself over to the rulership of the Lord Jesus Christ, now being led by Him, living by Him, walking in Him, all you see is Him. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus you'll wake up in the morning and begin to talk about all the glorious things that God has done for you. You begin to allow God's heavenly glory and power and majesty to flow through you. Right there in right there before you ever even get in the shower. Hallelujah. You have a camp meeting before you ever even get in the shower. You have a Holy Ghost meeting. You'll be strengthened by the power of God. You'll let the anointing of the Lord come upon you. Everything about your life tomorrow will be different. And then if you give yourself to these things every day, you'll grow strong. You'll grow strong. You'll find yourself in a heavenly realm more than an earthly realm. You'll find yourself with holy desires and holy emotions instead of unholy desires. You turn on that TV, you'll be grieved as deeply as God the Holy Ghost is grieved. Oh, no, he's clothesline preaching now. You know, we need the clothesline preacher. Somebody needs to tell you how to dress because obviously you got a, a disconnect. <laughs> you got to, somebody needs to tell you how to act because obviously somebody, somehow you missed the, the, the memo or you missed the instructional. But I'm going to move on from that. Everybody knows that I love them here, right? Yes. I want to make sure that everybody also knows that I'm rebuking you too. And I'm correcting you. And I'm instructing you in the ways of life. And I'm not going to let up. I'm as long as I'm in this tabernacle, I'm going to stir you up by putting you in remembrance of these things. I'm not going to declare to you my word. I'm going to declare to you his word. And his word will change everything about your life. Hallelujah. His word will bring to you all the blessings and all the promises. Hallelujah. And you'll find yourself in his eternal life. You'll, he, of course, that life is eternal. The life that he's already given to us, the life of Christ Jesus, is eternal life is unending life. It's both in quality and qual quantity, everything that Father himself possesses. He gave it to us as a free gift. We didn't have to earn it. Isn't it amazing? Uh, we can turn our back on it, reject it. We can, we can handle the holy things of God in an unholy way, and yet he'll forgive us. He's merciful. He's long-suffering. All we've got to do is really want these things. That's it. All he's got to see is in our heart. We want this, Father. I want this. Lord, I know that I, I fell and I messed up over and again, but I want this. And he's right there with you. He's going to make sure that you per he perfects everything that concerns you. He's going to establish you. This is the way he is. He's so full of loving kindness and tender mercies. Now, just quickly look here. I just want you to, I'll, I'll say, okay, no, I'll tell you. I want you to quit praying for the Holy Ghost to come and recognize that he's here. Oh, Holy Ghost, come. He's here. He's here. 
He's here. He's here. Have you begun in the Holy Ghost now to be made perfect by your own human ability? Everybody that believes that, raise your hand. Everybody that lives that way, raise your hand. Okay, well, that's fine. That's good. That's good. Go ahead, prophesy. You know, lay hold on faith. Counts those things which are not as though they were. I mean, listen, just, just grab, a hold of the, grab a hold of the measure of it, though, to where it really becomes quantifiable in your life. To where that you, 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 can, you can fully say that you no longer live. That you go ahead and you begin to say it. You begin to declare it. That the acts of your life are the acts of the Holy Spirit. That you're, you're, you've been bought with a price. That you're not your own. And that you're devoted to Him being glorified in your body and in your spirit which are His. That you as the temple of the Holy Ghost are being led by Him, moving Him, walking in Him. I pray in Jesus' name. You just prophesy these things over yourself. That you say, I've got a new heart. I've not got a wretched heart. That you've got, that, you, that he, he, he's come to renew you in the spirit of your mind. You don't have to try, to try to find salvation or relationship. Or you don't live in some realm of condemnation or separation. I mean, that's the point. How many people live in that realm? There's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Are you in him? Amen. He's made it easy for you to get in him. All you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord. You'll be saved. And when you're saved, that means you're in him. He delivers you out of the camp of the enemy and brings you into his camp. And brings you into his life in a way that is an unspeakable gift. Being made one with him. Look here in Ephesians chapter 3. Here's what the Lord says. He says in verse 18. He says, verse 17, he says, That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, and you being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the height, the breadth, the length, the depth. To know, listen, here's what the Lord's saying. He's saying with all saints, not some saints. He's, this is what Father, this is the one who's, who has given to us all things that he has. All things that he possesses. So that we might say, and of his fullness have all we received. He has purposed that everybody come to know what is the full measure. To know what is the breadth, the height, the length, the depth. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. And that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. What a gift. What a privilege. I mean, there's Hindu guys. They call them Hindu holy guys. But, but they're not holy guys. They're unholy guys. Because they've not been washed in the blood. But they'll go and they'll, 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 they'll put themselves, they'll get themselves in a cave. And they'll, they'll barricade themselves in the cave where they can't get out. And they'll have a little window to look through. And all the people will come and give something to the holy man as an offering to God. Because he's trying to purify himself from sin. That he doesn't have to come back as some insect or snake. So that he can transcend the earthly life and step into the heavenly realm. They, they, they hang themselves up by the ankles. Get somebody else to do it. Hang themselves up by the ankles. Whatever, man. Trying to, to mortify the, the deeds of their body. It's hectic to be a holy man in India. <laughs> it's hectic to be a Hindu. That's sold out to not sinning. Because if you sin one time, you're, it's, you're, 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 you're done. Uh, you're, you're done. I mean, what if God's people got so serious about the Lord? You wouldn't have to go to those measures. You actually get to be filled with joy. Walk around shining like the noonday sun. Huh? Living in peace. Living in glory land. My, 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 my. Having all that Father has given to us. All we have to do is be willing. Just be willing to stay over here in this realm called love. This love of, of the Lord Jesus to devote ourselves and dedicate ourselves. And my goodness, how many, how many assaults come against his love in our life on a daily basis? How many people cut you off on your way to work? <laughs> how many people say unhappy, displeasing words to you? How many situations oppose you? Huh? How many opportunities do you have to get out of love instead of stay, instead of, come on. It's not like you've got to run right up the middle. No problem. But now you're going to say, I'm gonna, I want to I I, I stay over here in this realm where everything that I've received from him can be fully developed within my life. And I can begin to not only understand that I've received the fullness of Christ as the Lord Jesus Christ has given it to me as a free gift, but now this fullness of God is being made manifest through my life. Go turn to the next page. In Ephesians chapter 4. And here's what Paul says. He says, and of course, 
I'm going to read verse 11 because a lot of people don't like verse 11. <laughs> because folks figure they can do this without verse 11. So I'm going to go ahead and get verse 11. Okay, because I'm going to talk to you about what Father has for you, but you can't do it without verse 11. Uh, and you can't be pastored by somebody from Africa or Australia. Oh, where's your pastor? He's in Indonesia. I had somebody from Australia say, could you be my pastor? I said, you got to be kidding me, man. You know what that's asking? It's like you telling me that I'm going to have a flock of sheep in Australia. They're going to be dead in a month. You can't pastor somebody you can't touch and take care of and minister to. People want to people want to try to they want to shortchange God. They don't want to submit. They don't want to learn humility. They don't want to learn low, lowliness. They don't want to learn meekness. They don't want to learn coming under authority. They want to have it their way and and their way and and that's it. I should say their way and their way and their way, and then that's it, because that'd cover me myself and I. You, you got to be willing to be broken of that. The Spirit of the Lord wants to break you. He just, you're going to have to say, Lord, bend me. One of the great revivals of the past came where a bunch of people say, Lord, bend me. I know I'm stubborn and rebellious. I've lived this way all my life. Now I want to be different. I want to learn loneliness and meekness. Jesus is coming to me. If you're weary and you're heavy laden, if you're sick and you're diseased and you can't stop sinning, come unto me. And I'll give you rest. Hallelujah. Take my yoke upon yourself. Learn of me. I'm meek and lowly. And find rest unto your souls. The, so Paul says that the Lord for his church, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. So that for the perfecting of the saints, so the saints will be fully matured. For the maturing of, so let me say this, for the maturity, maturing of the holy ones. He would say, oh, I'm a sinner. Oh, yeah, I'm just a sinner. Well, the reality of it is, is the Lord called us holy ones 64 times in the New Testament. And then somebody wants to take and twist a verse of Scripture where in the Greek language you could simply understand it where Paul just simply saying that first, before anything else, he was a sinner. Not that he was continuing to be a sinner with Jesus being fully manifested in his life. As Jesus the minister of sins is just twisting a verse of Scripture and is trying to make something up so people can salve their own iniquity. Look, when are you going to start saying I'm a holy one? I mean, I, I mean, I, you know, we say, you know, do we have any holy people in the, in the place tonight? Everybody should raise their hand. Yeah. And, and you, 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 how many holy people we have here tonight? Yeah. Okay, just check it, just check it. I just want to make sure you're not a bunch of religious people. <laughs> just check it to make sure I was in the same audience, a group of people that I thought it was in. You know, and then, uh, you know, I've been in meetings where, you know, it's like the preacher's imitating. Is anybody holy here? I'll raise my hand. Because I'm not ashamed of the gospel. He made me holy. gave me the gift of holiness. He's called me a saint. He, all the Bible, all of his word, everything that his promises are to the holy ones. Which we happen to call in the English language saints. But it means holy ones. But in the Greek language, where it's translated saints, it means holy ones. And in the Hebrew language, where it's translated saints, it means holy ones. Hallelujah. And that holiness came from him and gave it to us. It's a gift. Uh, it's wonderful. Hallelujah. Renewed us in, in righteousness and true holiness. I'll go ahead and read that here in a minute. It says we're right here in the same chapter. So I always get carried away. For the, for the maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, for what purpose? My job is to bring you into the fullness of the measure and the maturity of the ministry of Jesus unto a fully matured man. My job is to bring you into the fullness of the measure of the, of the ministry of Jesus unto a fully matured man. My job is to bring you into the fullness of Jesus. <laughs> Fullness of the measure of the ministry of Jesus unto a fully matured man. My job is not to powder, baby powder your pew, to facilitate you, to pat you on the back and say, you're going to be all right, honey. It's okay. Don't worry. We all sin more or less every day. God, understand. Just keep coming back. We love you. No, my job is to bring you into the fullness of the measure of the maturity of the ministry, fullness of the measure of the ministry of Jesus to, to come into every dimension of, of that which he himself expressed to us and told us to walk in as his disciples. Which he sent this 12 out to do, sent the 70 others out to do, and then said, whoever believes, do, go do it too. 
These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They'll cast out devils. Somebody said, well, I don't believe that Mark 16, 17 should be in the Bible. Well, you don't, shouldn't believe that, Mark 3, that John 3, 16 should be in the Bible either. By the same token. And besides that, we'll just get, we'll just, if you don't believe in Mark 16, 17, we'll just lay John 14, 12 on you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And then if you don't like that, we'll just take you over there and show you Philip and Samaria doing Mark 16, 17. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise that. And then you don't know, like that, we'll take you out there to the Isle of Miletus and show you Paul doing John Mark 16, 17 when he shook the serpent off into the fire and felt no harm. And we won't stop there. We'll just keep telling you about the miracles of Jesus. And listen, I, I went into a nation one time. I spent, I sent a friend of mine in who I knew was going to go to speak nothing but faith and minister faith, signs, wonders, and miracles, laying hands on the people, have... And there would be, there would be healings and, and, and manifestations against the Spirit. And he went in and ministered to this, uh, this collection of a bunch of college kids. It was Presbyterian, Methodist. It was Pentecostal. It was uh, Assemblies of God, Foursquare, just all various different, you know, Bible colleges and, and youth ministries. And then I went in. Then I ministered to them on faith, and then we took them into a crusade with us, and they were literally pulling people up out of wheelchairs, dragging them around, their knees getting all skin up. As a pa from a pastoral point of view, I thought, hey, <clears throat> maybe you shouldn't do that. But then I just left them alone because it wasn't long, and the people that they were dragging around through the dirt was up walking around praising God. Man, what happens when you get radical about faith? Uh, what happens when you let go, man, and trust God? Even with your life, you risk everything. Oh, yeah, it's a scary prospect to move in faith. It is scary. I know you're, you're scared out of your mind because of the boisterous wind and the waves. You feel like you're going to be, uh, uh, you're about to drown. It's so black pitch dark night you can't see your hand in front of your face. And all of a sudden you see this light out on the, out on the water and you hear him come unto me. And you step out upon that sea that threatens your life and find out that you have mastery over all the physical realm. I know why people sit back at home. Listen, God wants there to be valiant men in the earth today. But that valiance isn't going to happen because of some sheer determination uh, that you have within your own strength. It's because you've stepped over into the presence of the Lord and you've been built up in the whole, uh, this most holy faith. You've been built up by the p power of the living God. You've been trained up in the ways of God, skilled in the ways of God to walk in all the, mature, minister, the maturity, the ministry of Jesus Christ. And, he, and then Paul says, well, you've got another option. Look at the next option. You can either do that. That's, a, that's plan A. You got that? Everybody, plan A, 13. If you're taking notes, say plan A. Just put note, plan A. There's all plan B, too. You with me? Otherwise, you can be a child tossed to and fro and carried about every wind of doctrine and the tricks of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive you. And tell you all their nonsense and give you excuses not to have any responsibilities in the kingdom of God so you can go ahead and live your own life and die in your sins. Uh oh. <laughs> Plan A. Plan A. And somebody says, Who's able to do these things? Who's able to do these things? You and me. Verse 24. And, 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 and the Lord says, Here's what the Lord wants you to do. He, he's, what, he's what He wants you to do. He wants you. He wants you to recognize that you, that you put on the new man. He said, he said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Another way, is, uh, a way to say, another way to say this in just common vernacular is you're going to think differently about yourself from now on. You put on the new, you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. In other words, you think differently about yourself. Don't be conformed to this world, but be, be transfigured by thinking differently about yourself. Can I say that? Do you know what verse of scripture that is? Yeah. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. See, if His Word is in you, then um, you have a possibility of doing it. You'll be kept by the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Kept by the power of God. Hallelujah. So the Lord says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transfigured. 
Be transfigured. Be transfigured. Same word for the transfiguration when Jesus was transfigured before them. Be tra Can you imagine what will happen if you start thinking different about yourself? In other words, you start thinking about what God thinks about you. You start believing what he's do his report. Who's believed his report? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? We just believe what God has said. We, be we just begin to move in it. We risk everything that you have. We throw all of your life in on that which he's promised. You won't be disappointed if you will. Think differently about yourself and put on the new man. Look at this, verse 24. Which is created and righteous, which after God, which just like God. <laughs> which after God. Because as he, he shaped man in his outward likeness, with his outward form and his inward likeness. When he created us from the small dust of the earth. When the Spirit of the Lord came upon us and overshadowed us, then the holy thing that was conceived on the inside of us, Christ formed in us. Hallelujah. <laughs> the new man, the new, at, at the moment of the new birth, when we were born again and became a new creation, a new creature, circumcision, circumcision and uncircumcision matters nothing with God. All that matters with God is are you a new creature? Are you different than that creature that was born of your father and of your mother? Your religious activities, your ritual, all the things that you say that you do and you believe matters not with God. Only a new creation, a new man, a new creature. Therefore, if we be in Christ, we are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, everything is new. Can you just start saying that over yourself? Can you start believing that? Can that become the prophecy of your mouth? Can that become the way that you think? And all things are of God. And it's not broken up in the, in, in the extant manuscripts. It just flows right there together. It's just right there together. Verse 18 is right there with verse 17. And all things are of God. Can you imagine that? That you so belong to God that you are his purchased possession? That he bought you with the price? That he owns you? God owns me. Huh? I'm his purchased possession. I have been empowered to glorify him in my body and in my spirit. They belong to him. How can you, Bodhisattva, you don't belong to yourself. Quit, get rid of, you. Where's, where's the deed of your ownership? I want to see the deed of your ownership. I want to see the, don't give me your birth certificate either. I want to see the deed of your ownership, that you own yourself. Jesus purchased you, he bought you, he redeemed you with his blood. Hallelujah. He claims you as his own. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that empowering? Isn't that liberating? That all these lofty things and plans that we read in the Bible isn't our idea that we're trying to persuade God of. It's his command. It's that which pleases him. It's that which he wants us to do. But it's never going to happen until you start, until you're willing to start participating i mean the river of living uh, uh, the, ri the, the rivers of life the rivers of the living god are not going to flow through you and i until we allow them to flow we're going to have to rise up and take hold of that which father's freely given just be sitting back waiting hey the wait is over the rushing mighty winds blowing into place there's clothes and tongues of fire hallelujah and nothing will change until you start doing this Nothing will change until you start prophesying the word of God over you. Until you start believing. Nothing will change until you believe. It's according to your faith. Be it unto you. Amen. As long as you're an old man trying to become a new man, you're going to continue forever an old man and die one. Because the faith works the miracle. There is no miracle without faith. Faith comes by the word of God. The word of God declares something. You believe it, a miracle takes place. The miracle of God's faith says this. He he's made a new creation. All things are of God. Behold, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Everything is new. And everything is new. Ah, uh, everything is, everything is new. Everything about you belongs to God. It's of God. You're the issue. Born of the spermata of the incorruptible seed. This is true. Born of the resurrection. Born of the word. Born of the spirit. Born of God. The issue of the almighty. Hallelujah. The living word. Sutoro de zikatopa. I'm must stand here and scream and holler at you until you believe it. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to scream to the mountain, Grace! Grace! 
Grace, 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 grace. Tell there is no mountain. I'm going to cry out. This is what God's done till everybody believes and begins to see and look into the mirror and behold the glory of God. Behold the image and there be transformed. Hallelujah. There be transfigured. There be changed. Hallelujah. From glory to glory. How long does it take God to convince people to quit being religious with him? Israel wanted to be religious with God. They weren't willing to have the relationship that he wanted. He wanted to walk, in their, he wanted to walk with them. He wanted to walk in their midst. He wanted to dwell with them. And the Father's really interested in this relationship. And we turn him into religion. We turn him into ritual. I pray tonight in Jesus' name that you'll get passionate about these things, about his fame. I pray you'll get passionate about this glory that he's purposed to reveal through you and me. And the responsibility will come weighty upon your shoulders and you'll rise up and say I know that God has put his word in my mouth and in my heart that I am to do these things and that if I'm not willing to move with him if I'm not willing to lay hold on him if I'm not willing to allow that which he has freely given to flow through my life and be expressed through my life then there's no light because father placed that responsibility on you and me the fire of God's going to burn in this place I have the fire of the Holy Spirit, the fire of His Word is going to burn in this place. I'm telling you right now, this is no time for anything but a hammer to break the rocks in two. This is no time for anything short of the fire of God, flame, flame throwing Word of God, burn up all the chaff. Hallelujah. Everybody should be happy about that too. <laughs> Just lift your hands towards heaven. Just surrender to Jesus. You know, there's some viruses and diseases going around town. I, I, in the name of Jesus, you're not going to walk out of here with no virus and disease in Jesus' name. Not if you're submitted, not if you're submitted to me. And I'm submitted to God. Hallelujah. Because there's a supply flowing through into the place here. Amen. Christ Jesus is in the church. Somebody said, well, I don't want to be submitted to you. Well, I mean, if you can't be hooked up with me, you can't be hooked up with the Lord either. I mean, goodness gracious, if you can't be hooked up with the people around you, it's, it's the same thing. You know, it really is the same thing. We're not looking for anybody to honor us we want you to honor him but we're just telling you these are the these are the ways of the spirit these are the laws of the spirit of life that are in christ jesus i want everything that has been messing with you and stealing and robbing from you i want it to be broken off i don't want you to live another day of misery another day of sadness i, I don't want you to live another day of heartache i don't want things to fall apart on you this is what god says i want you to live in my life forevermore i want you to live in all my spiritual blessings that are here in a heavenly realm People want to have God's spiritual blessings in an earthly realm. Father says that my spiritual blessings belong to the heavenly realm. I, I've opened up the door of life unto you. I say, come on in. I've said, believe the good word. I've said, rise and shine. I've said, let my glory be revealed upon you. All you have to do is be willing. I've said, I've given you the supply. All you have to do is drink. My life and my, my glory will pour forth from you, says the Lord, in such an expression of divine power that nothing can stop and nothing can prevent you. Nothing can prevent the blessings and those things which God has sworn over you and promised you. You won't be stopped. I'm telling you right now, addiction, I break the power of it. I break the power of addiction now in the name of Jesus. Every stronghold of Satan, in Jesus' name. John, come here. I want to pray for you. John, come here. Come here. I want to pray for you. Come here. Non Jake, you say. Father, I thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus that John steps in the supernatural power with you, Father. Father, I think in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah, you better run out quick. Because I'm telling you right now, I'm on the hunt. I'm on the hunt. 
I'm on the hunt to set people free. I'm on the hunt to break off the yokes. I'm on the hunt. I'm on the hunt. Satan hunts the souls of men to snare them, to destroy their souls in hell. He hunts them with the net of sin. Father's come in his love to deliver anybody who's willing. Strengthen anybody who's willing. All still go to Nahum, boss today. No, too many times people get right to the moment of their breakthrough and they want to have a break. They get right to the moment and time of their breakthrough and they cave in to the pressure. People, I want you to be able to find a place in God where you can come to know Him in such a way that you find the strength that He would supply at that moment of breakthrough so that you'll stand in the place that He's preparing you to stand so that you can step into all the glory and all the things of His life that He wants to give you. O Sataya, O Rabaseya, O Rabaseya, O Rabaseya, Tim and Kim, Tim and Kim, Come, come, Tim and Kim, come please. Ozadiah, Sikida, Yataya, Mosiah. Azadiah. I just hear the Spirit of the Lord just telling me. I hear God telling me. I just saw, saw you this morning. I hear God telling me. I heard him tell me. Don't read no books. Read his book. Don't listen to men's plan. Listen to his plan. Don't back down. I mean, it's, Northern California is a threatening place. It's a stronghold of, de uh, of demons. It's a stronghold of witchcraft. And the power of sin. And what's left is what's left is possessed of religion. It don't need no soft talking. It doesn't need some, you know, light hand. It needs a hammer of God. And the word and that's found in the word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, you're going to have to rise up and be God's fit you for the battle. As long as you're being filled with his spirit, being continually filled with his presence, being empowered by him. Now, in Jesus' name. In the name of the Most High. Father, I thank you for taking a hold of Tim and Kim's life. Shaking them. Shake them. Shake them with your presence. Shake them with your glory. Shake them with your fire. Father, I pray that your power and your glory that Tim and Kim would respond to you, that they'd be vessels in your hand. Oh, God, that your authority can fall upon the land and from Point Arena all the way up to you, Eureka. That stronghold and dominion of rebellion will be broken. In Jesus' name. Let God raise you up. He doesn't need to go to another. Not when you're willing to respond and not when you're willing to be used. Today a man of God said to me, he said, I can't believe that people don't get it. I said, my dear brother, let us rejoice that we get it. That we get it. That our eyes are open. That we get it. So many people don't get their moment of opportunity, the day of their visitation. They acquiesce to the atmosphere. They abdicate to the powers that be. Start calling it, this is the way it is, instead of plowing. I've been prophesying to this area for 30 years. I'm telling you right now, I just feel like I'm warming up, about ready to get into the game. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Father's word will not fail when there's somebody that's willing to stand and not back down. If everybody that ever came into this ministry who promised to never leave, who would stand by us and break through to the things that God had purposed us to do. If they would be here, they'd be over, I'm just talking about the people who promised. There'd be over 3,000 people here tonight. There'd be maturity and growth. There'd be all kinds of giftings of the Spirit. People fall off right and left and center. Doesn't matter. It'll make no difference. So long as there's one person willing to continue to stand, Father will do what He's promised to do. There has to be a place where we contest and protest the, that which the powers of darkness are doing and not come under its influence, not be touched by its power. There is a, there, for, there is, there's almost like, as it were, a contest. But if we stand and we don't back down, we win. 
Father breaks off the yoke of this region. Southern California no longer living under the pains of death and the dominion of sin. But a great Holy Ghost revival, a great outpouring of the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord begins to move. Not just from Dan to Ascalon, but the Spirit of the Lord begins to move. You know that verse of Scripture, just before Samson steps into the scene. So I believe it's Joshua chapter 7, Joshua chapter 16. Right before Joshua chapter 17, verse 1. Six, I don't remember that. Is it 23? But the Spirit of the Lord begins to move from Los Angeles to San Diego. Father's going to show for, Father wants to show forth the greatness of his power and of his glory. His power to heal and to save and to deliver. His power to take the, the eyes of them that are born blind and open them. Not just be here and there. Just, but to be such a, such, such a volume of signs and wonders and miracles. It can't be hidden. God has, didn't light a light, his light for it to be hidden. He lit up his light. Set it in the highest place so that all men would be able to see. Yes. I, I, God's just looking for you to come alongside and break through into that realm. To let him form in you whatever needs to be formed. To let him correct you in those areas that need to be corrected so he can do through you what he desires to do. Amen. Time to get rid of the doubt and unbelief. Time to get ready. It's, it's time to respond fully to the Lord and say, okay. And not minimize yourself. Say, who am I? Well, you know what? That question has already been settled. Huh? It's not who you are. It's who he is. Hallelujah. You can either believe in your gifting or you can believe in him. <laughs> I guarantee you. You start believing in him, some great things are going to start happening. I'm Bruce every day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your power. Thank you, Father, for your signs and wonders. Thank you, Father, that you defeated death for me. Thank you, Father, that you defeated sickness for me. Thank you, Father, that you defeated disease for me. Thank you, Father, that you defeated every work of deception and the power of the enemy for me. Thank you, Father, that you brought me into the land. Of your divine power and glory. You brought, the Bible say, you brought me into a place, oh God. Of living for you. Of living fully for you. I just want everybody. Everybody in the place, just stand with me, will you? So Rama Makira Sipita Just keep praying with me. Just if you're on the floor, you don't need to get up. If you want to get up, you can get up, but you don't need to use. I think the longer you stay down there. There's something deeper for you and, and me. Something far more glorious than any eyes have seen. It's available for the passionate, for the hungry, and for the thirsty. It's available for those who, who cannot live without this moving of the Lord. Who believes this report that he has given of himself. Who believes these things which he has spoken. Who understands the peril of humanity. A lost and dying world that is on a way to a devil's hell for all eternity. A people who have believed that God is who he says he is. That he'll do the things he'll, that he said he'll do. That he's made you and I his partners. 
He made you and I His joint heirs. He's anointed us with His Holy Ghost. He's endued us with power and of all His fullness that we've received. He's given us the ability to know Him in all the fullness of His glory, to walk with Him and to abide in Him, to have all those things which He has freely given. Father is looking. Father's eyes go to and fro throughout the earth. He's searching looking for someone he may show himself mighty upon their behalf. Just come and seek him with me on Monday and Tuesday. Even though you may be somewhere else, seek him. Seek the Lord. Seek his presence. Lay hold on the things of truth. Lay hold on the good word of God. Lay hold on the things of the Spirit of the Lord. Lay hold on a mighty moving of God. Lay hold on revival in the land. Lay hold on a great outpouring. Lay hold of these that things which God commands. I'm going to tell you right now, you listen to me. Only passion takes hold of these things. Silence will never have anything. People who can live almost with an attitude and a disposition to where they are more passionate about earthly things, they can never have these heavenly things. It's too sacred. You're going to have to get weaned of the world that has brought you delights and personal comfort, that has brought you interest and filled you up and made you happy. I'm going to tell you right now, as far as God is concerned, that is the spirit of adultery. It's spiritual adultery. It's idolatry as much as anything else is. You listen to me. When he's invited us into the place of real pleasure, when he's divided us, invited us into the place of all those things that only his life could afford, and yet we would still go and turn to death, that's Israel going to Egypt and turning to Assyria and going to all of her lovers. And not for money, paying them to be with her. I pray tonight that you will let your passions be taken over by the Spirit of the Lord. I pray tonight you'll let your emotions be taken over by the Spirit of the Lord. I pray tonight that when you feel corrected and rebuked, when you feel like the preacher is talking about you, that you just fall down and be broken instead of being otherwise. I pray that when you feel that God is talking to you, that you'll be broken in His presence. That every step that you make, that every choice that you make, that everything that comes out of your mouth, you're saying, Father, we want all your glory to be revealed through our lives. We want your Father. We want your presence to be made manifest on the full scale of that which you have purposed through our lives. Let there be no more darkness. Let there be the bright shining of your light and of your glory. In the midst of your church. In the midst of our lives. You just reach out now and take hold of heaven. You just reach out now and take hold of heaven. You just reach out now and you take hold of heaven. You bring a change tonight. You bring a shift in your own life tonight.
begin to pray. Just begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Yeah. Father, we ask you in Jesus' name, in your mercy, O oh God, strengthen every person in this place to allow you to arise, to recognize, O oh God, that you ride upon the praises of your people, upon this thanksgiving of relationship with you, that you also arise, O oh God, through the same. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that everyone would give themselves to letting your word be in their mouth continually, that your word will not depart out of their mouth, but that they will meditate on those things that you have declared concerning them, that they'll lay hold on that which you have said and be it and do it. Holy Spirit, we know that you come and brought the life of it because as surely as the body is dead without the spirit, so surely the Spirit of the Lord has come and dwelling on the inside of us so that every expression that Father has desired huh, might be realized. So that every expression and every divine power and every divine ability that Father has given to you and I to have is present. His authority is ours. He's made us His Son. Amen. He's made us His Son. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. Well, if there's anybody here tonight, if you have sickness or disease in your body, we want to pray for you. The Lord will heal you. If there's anybody here tonight, you've been dealing with addiction or you've been dealing with a stronghold in your life and you want to get serious with God, you want to see that thing broken. You know, a friend of mine said, said, I woke up and it was like God came in with a Holy Ghost gun and shut all the rats out of my life. <laughs> he said, all those plaguing thoughts, all those harassing, tormenting things. It just, I woke up and they were all gone. I mean, I just believe God the Holy Ghost will come in with the Holy Ghost shotgun and shoot all the rats in your life. <laughs> I mean, it's a tor terrible thing to say, you know. But if you're living under tormenting thoughts, it's just not supposed to be. And we tell you to meditate on the Word and just proclaim the Word and just live in the Word of God and you don't find the, the, the entrance or the liberty. Well, we're going to get something out. We're going to do something. There's no sense in you continuing on with your problems when Father has made such great provision for an answer. If you're here tonight and never called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't know what it means to be born from above. 
If, you're, if you haven't received a new heart and a new spirit, you still got the one that you were born with. Father wants a change. It's got to be a change. The old creation, the first creation ain't going to work. A new creation is all that we'll do. He's here to meet you, touch you. There's no reason that anybody should leave out of here tonight with torment in your mind. No reason. There's no reason for anybody to leave out of here tonight with torment in your body. No reason. It's not Father's will. It's not Father's purpose. There's a, a yoke breaking anointing of His presence. I hear for you. Ha. Huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, uh, Brittany, that's just the glory of God all over you there. Hallelujah. That's Tekoda Manjalea. Ha ha. That's just uh, that's the sweet presence of Jesus. Amen. Man, I've seen so many people, they didn't come in and kiss Jesus like the w woman who was a sinner, but I watched him come in and kiss them. He's just amazing. When we're incapacitated, we just don't know how to move anymore. He comes and moves us. But what happens when we begin to rise up and we will not be denied? When we lay hold of God and we will not let go. Will you do this? Yeah. Father's asking you, will you do it? Will you let your, all your passions come and in some total be directed towards Him? So that He can come and fill you up with all of His fullness, with all of His goodness. Those of you up here, slip your hands towards heaven. And right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth, and just begin to receive that which you have need of. Hallelujah. Right now in Jesus' name. What's wrong with you? Yeah, what's wrong? What's wrong with your finger? Huh? Is it hurt now? Can you find any pain at all? Okay. Well, we're good. Well, it never comes back. In Jesus' name, it never comes back. It never comes back. And what's wrong with you? Huh? Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you to be healed. What's wrong with you? That's terrible. I command that to leave you right now. I command that to go from you. I'll break that thing off of you right now. What's wrong with you? Que paso? Hola. Como estas? Gloria a Dios. Rabas teke. Right now, Genela, con Spirito Santo, ora mismo. Hallelujah. 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 Fuego de Dios. Fuego de Dios. Hey, bro, come here with your wife. Come over here. Come. Come right here. Yeah. Come over here. Got something good for you. Got a surprise. <laughs> huh. Hallelujah. Just lift your heads, hands towards heaven. God's going to just baptize you fresh in the Holy Ghost. How's that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get ready now, right now, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Right now. Fire God comes on you right now. The glory of God out of your belly flows. These rivers of the Holy Ghost. Ha <laughs> ha. They run ganja lokea, manje katai eshea tome, tome, toma de apo, toma tea tia shebritushe, le shato kinanjea, ratane oche, kambonje, rabate, ha ha, rabate, there, bat de ra, rabato, rabato, rabata, 
Zataya Mahase, Mahaseate, Ha ha ha, Manjaya Kea, Manjaya Kuta, Mangale Koya, Mangala Galabaya Labochoto, Boriba, Robose, Abara de Yara de Yara, the Sara de Yata Lobota, La Bota Labota, La Boda Bora de Yara, Rashea Bokinaya, Nidaya Labo, Dinayale, O Munusia, Mandea Beatia Tosia, Hala Joya Rahahi, Loho Tahaya, Mayanea, Leo, Habe Yatea. There you go. There you be a little coche. Ha ha. There you look at Yashane. Mele nigi adamon Jesus. Mele namon gaya lo shuzuri. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the, just stay right there. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. You're in a spot. When you find the spout where the glory comes out, don't move. When you find a good spot, best the wisdom you can possibly get is don't move. Stay right there. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Hallelujah. But I'm so sick of it. Okay, well, good. You should be. I mean, that's what a waste of time, you know. It's one of those things that a lot of people are stuck in. Addiction to video games. It's just one. It's a, it's a modern addiction. Lift your hands towards heaven. Be just liberated. Be liberated. I command you to be freed right now in Jesus' name. Asatolki Angele. Right now, in Jesus' name, the capacity to walk in an authority over everything that's an inordinate desire and improper in your life. I command you to be strengthened by the Spirit in your inner being right now. In Jesus' name, receive. 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 Ha. Huh. Receive. Fast step eight. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. There you go. What's up? Uh, might have big cancer here. You might have cancer. Big cancer. What kind of cancer? Big cancer. They did a Skin. On somebody. And they said, okay, man, it's why I went to a doctor. The doctor looked at it. He said, man, you might actually be sick. Well, the first mistake you made was going to the doctor and listening to him. But you know what? I'm going to tell you right now. I understand that that's the way the program goes. That's the way the drill is here. But in Jesus' name, I break the power of that thing in the name of Jesus. It's not true. In Jesus' name, it's not true. I say you cancer free. Now, look at me. Don't look over here. I say you cancer free. Who are you going to believe? Me or the doc? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I had some people say, come to me one time, they say, hey, is there a doctor in your group? I said, yeah, I'm a doctor. They said, somebody's in a coma. They have a heat stroke and they're in a coma. I said, where are they at? And then they took me over to the person. I just said, said hey, sweetie, wake up. They were amazed at my doctoring skills. What's wrong with you? You need a new tooth. Yeah, you can't. You don't have no insurance. People don't have any insurance. They're going to have to get hold of faith. Everybody else can just have insurance. I command you to have a new tooth in the name of Jesus. I command you to have a new tooth. Somebody says, oh, really? Yeah, you know what? The Lord tells us to raise the dead to life again. My goodness gracious. You know, you better well go ahead and just believe for a tooth. Are you feeling better? Huh? What is it that you need? Anything else? Oh, how he loves you and me.
Hallelujah. Oh, Father. You, your presence, oh God, so glorious, so wonderful. Oh God. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. No half measures. Come on the way up. Sandy, come on the way up. You're halfway up. You might as well come on the way up. <laughs> you know, the one thing that I'm so earnest about seeing all God's people step into is this beautiful realm of heaven. Is just living over here. Father, I ask that Sandy just step into this beautiful realm of heaven. Just, just, just live over here. Sikar mamus breve kist baronea. Sikando liste beronishi. But come stand, mama. Come stand with your your children. Sarah, just come over here and stand by your mom. Everybody, just lift your hands towards heaven. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for the supply of your spirit. <laughs> Thank you, mighty God. <laughs> Father, we thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles, and especially for your manifest presence in our lives. In Heather's life, Josiah and Jake and Sari. Thank you, Lord. We'll find a bunch of people around you. Listen, I want you to listen before before you do this. I want you to spend I want you to spend some time just finding people around you and just, just hug them, just bless them, tell them that you love them. But listen. Be, just before you do that, I want you to take an offering. Come worship the Lord. I want you to get an offering. Come worship the Lord. And I want you to get an offering, the one that you can offer in righteousness, the one that your heart is in, the one that's precious to you, something sacred to you. You're expecting God to work a miracle through it. And watch what Father will do for you. I pray in the name of Jesus that everything that's entered you have to get out of the way and that you'll have the faith and the capacity to rise up and not let it mess with you anymore. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And that there will be no sickness among you. And that there will be no heartaches among you. There are people here tonight that are tormented in their mind and they haven't been touched by the Lord yet. They haven't gotten a breakthrough. I'm not talking about you because you got a breakthrough. But I'm just over here laying my hands on you. Father has everything that you need you've got to receive. Yeah, just come worship the Lord. Just come worship the Lord. With your giving. Just come worship the Lord. Come worship Him. Come worship Him. Come bring an offering in righteousness. Come worship Him. Find a bunch of people around you. Hug them. Tell them that you love them. Bless them in the mighty name of Jesus.
Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you for boldness, confidence. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the anointing. It's a member of the desiccation table. It's all right. It's all right. When people fall out under the anointing, they don't get hurt. We only have catchers for the people who fake falling out under the anointing that would sue us. True. Jesus name. Jesus. Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for touching Paul's life. Thank you, Jesus, for touching Paul. Feel him up, oh God. Feel him up, oh God. Ambra Satega, ni siquiera, ni siquiera, ni siquiera. Just be filled up. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Let the Lord touch you. Let them touch you. It's not hard. Just reach out with your heart's desire and your passion. So. Sukara no sepera sepete. Mangzesi. Malangadea. Mangalesepeya. Father, we just thank you for lighting a fire on the inside of Daryl. Mang Jake Lang Sera, Mang Lace Poro Sutelea, Mang Brang Jesita Lucifer, Mang Lace Poro Nai, Hallelujah, Ben De Rasitis, Ben Assembla Gabra Dest. Mondo Sadek. Mondo kase today. Mondo kase today. Mongres by. Ha 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 Jesus, I do be resay o tu manaya. Is that a man zamba la kei yashaya? Ibara masauta la de kei o tu. Be strengthened by the Spirit now in your, in your inner being. Be strengthened right now to run the race. Be strengthened, be strengthened right now to take your place. Come stand among the mighty. Don't back down. Come on up to higher ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Living in the glory, walking in the presence, living in the beauty of the Lord, and walking in the joy 
living in the glory. I'm walking in the presence of the Lord. Camera da vete cutara da vese breve chi si bretana de seti. In barana mam je se gibre babo cutaya. Je se rotor de mi pre de si prat tambra de Jesus. Je bebre de cuta le name ki liste per nai. Father, I thank you for the release of your spirit. Thank you, Father, for the release of your anointing. Father, I thank you for the release of your mighty acts in our lives, O oh God. Father, we thank you for your mercy that gives every person the capacity to receive. Father, I thank you for the passion that's in the hearts of your people to lay hold upon you. Lord, that will lay hold and not let go. That will have these things that belong to the realms of your divine power and your glory. And won't, won't, won't be willing to abide any substitutes. Ura basata re ni bikita la la ba ora. Ura ba basite de kidida la masota. Ire be 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 te kushara ba ba katiste pere debre. Lorama mamanda de debe kishidur ba soto re difera sata. Mambre be 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 kidiste breta su re nambre dest. Mambre do sukuru si brete si to lo su kara depe. Mende kea, mende kea, mende kea se pe, mende kea se pera nayo. Hallelujah. Zebre da kinda la bolsada de debre de si zista koron sika. Ranam balea. Right out of your belly flows. Right out of your belly flows. Rivers of the Holy Ghost. Right up out of your belly flows. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Zaya. The supernatural realms of a heavenly realm. A heavenly, a heavenly glory. A heavenly work. Rabba sadea ea. Right now in Jesus' name. Receive. Uh, receive right now. Be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. And let that wonderful work of grace come bubbling up right out of your innermost being. Let that expression of heaven, that utterance of the Holy Ghost. Take hold of every part of your being. Take along the barane. Take hold among the Zutifi. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Ah, but this is Father's plan. This is what He supplied. This is His idea. This is what He wants. Father wants rivers. He wants rivers of this, of this heavenly language. He wants rivers of this divine power and this divine glory. That's what Father wants. Hallelujah. Uh, that's the expression that He desires. And Father, we pray that your people build themselves up in their most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Keeping themselves in the love of God. And there in that love, come to know all this fullness that you have. Father, we thank you that your people just prophesy over themselves, call those things which you have spoken done. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. Call those things which you have given, received. <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So Korama Mambanda de Beke. So Topamba la Kebara Namako City. So Pokorama Mamba Bapa Katea to Saberatea. La Bamba la Lena and a man and Ayashi. La Bamba la Lena and a Maladea Liga Patosa. La Bamba la Lana la Makia la Basatane. Calabasanda la de Kibara Nasa Tadea Talalopo. So Batala la Bacaranda de Beke de Sidi. Ah, the soldiers. In Jesus' name. 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 By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Spirit of the Lord. Father, nothing but you. Nothing but you. Only those things, oh God, which you do. Only the expressions which you give. That's all, Father. It's all that we desire. We want nothing else. We want nothing else. We, want the thing, we do not want the things of this world. We do not want the things of men. But those things, oh God, that are supernatural, that flow out from you. Father, we'll take nothing less. We want nothing other. Hallelujah. Lord, we lay hold on you. We lay hold on you right now. Lord, we lay hold on you right now. Lord, we lay hold on you right now. Lord, 
Lord, we lay hold upon you and that which you've supplied. Uza Rebecca di Shandolo Bora Bedeve di Casolo Dora. Le membre becchieri se bande le beve beve de de beve se duvre desht. Lucando Rebecca di Adolo Shamba Galea Patavra Baste. Ibre Babakita non nombo lo bonde de dembre be singolo che parnea. Zorra Mangheri de Bebrema mandambre becchieri se beve ma susurro tusi. Abre vest viz. Oh, va donde le veste sur vai. Oh, tora donde le vestute le cosita le mani. Oh, ora ve casti da da mongolge le mangi li piccare na se bedeo. Debre mangi le zemba cani chi sembla che taglia le mbondo le berre ve susurro tu. Vaca la lana mambara ma sempre ve ere se si. Jesus, Lord Jesus, rana mambre desust. Lo broso ti frenea sust. Lo broso su renea sust. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, Father, you, you, your signs and your wonders. Father, the moving of your mighty presence. Father, come have your will and way in our life. Father, come take full control in every dimension. We yield ourselves to you. For we willingly yield up to you. We willing give, willingly give over to you, O oh God. Every dimension of our spirit. Father, just to see your glory revealed and manifested in the way, O oh God, that we know that you've purposed to make yourself known. Lord, you know that this is the desperation in my heart. Lord, you know that this is the cry of our lives. To see all of your people to step into that wonderful expression and manifestation of the Spirit that has been given to every person. Lord, and we thank you for the word of knowledge, and we thank you for the word of wisdom, and we thank you for the discerning of spirits. Lord, we thank you for the working of miracles and the gifts of the healing. Lord, we thank you for the gift of faith, for prophecy, for tongues, for interpretation of tongues. Father, we thank you for the glory and the beauty of your manifest presence among us. Your rivers of living water that flow out of our lives to a dry and thirsty land, to a sick and diseased a needy nation. Lord, we know that you've made us a balm, as it were, in this place. You made us the healing ointment to a sick and diseased people. Father, we ask now in Jesus' name that the glory of your church, Father, would be fully made manifest here in this place. That those who are here seeking your face Father, that you would raise them up and that you would take them into every area of life, into every situation of society. You begin to use them, O oh God, in the ways, Father, that you've purposed. Father, in the ways that show forth your splendor and your majesty. Lord, in the stupidity and the things that belong to religion that have allowed, been allowed to eclipse the glory of your only begotten Son, Father, we pray that it come to an end, that there be only sacred things in the, in the house. Father, there be only sacred things in our life. Be only the, there would be only the majesty and the splendor of your life-giving power being expressed through our thoughts and our action, our speech, and our manner and our conduct. Lord, that we always have the ability to give to those who ask, those who are sick and diseased, to give them healing. Those of God who are tormented and suffering and in pain, to liberate them. Those who are possessed and tormented by devils, to set them free. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that everyone that's standing in this place will allow you to cause them to be drink to a thirsty, to a thirsty people. Father, that everyone here will rise up in the faith that you've given. Walk in it. Live it. 
demand it, not settle for anything less. Oh, Jikara Zayatana. Oh, to say Kalamosia Tia Namakahesi. Oh, to say a Tia Kalamokasia. Oh, to say a Tia Lamakusia Tadaniata. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 